So Comic Con was back once again, and there was a lot of stuff revealed this time around. Like, I was honestly kind of surprised how much stuff there was this year. So I tried to compile all of the big stuff out of this year's con, and now we get to talk about it. Also, I've linked all the videos I talk about in the description below. First off, in the lead up to Comic Con, there were some pictures and posters and that kind of stuff released. There were some Suicide Squad pictures from Entertainment Weekly, some Guardians of the Galaxy 2 concept art, where we get to see the new member of the team, Mantis, and Baby Groot, which was pretty awesome. There were some Wonder Woman pictures released, a Doctor Strange poster, and a Doctor Strange prequel comic, which I actually read. It doesn't show much, we're introduced to the Masters of the Mystic Arts, I'm guessing they're gonna help out Doctor Strange. It isn't much, but if you're interested, you should check it out. Now, for the actual convention, I've divided this up into Marvel, Warner Brothers, and Other. Starting with the Other, there was a new trailer for Snowden, which I still think looks pretty cool. There was a panel for Mr. Robot Season 2, which is a show I really should watch sometime soon. There was a screening for the movie Sausage Party, and a second Red Band trailer was released. I personally think this movie looks pretty hilarious so far. There was a Walking Dead Season 7 trailer, another show I should probably get into. Game of Thrones had a panel, Season 7's been delayed because they need to shoot at a time of year where it looks more like winter. Rick and Morty had a panel, Season 3 is coming out January 2017, I can't wait. There was also a little video released, again, link down below. Oh, oh is this your friend? Uh, don't worry, he died doing what he loved, being a dumb f Rat. Then, there was a surprise trailer for a new Blair Witch movie, which I won't be seeing. In case you don't know, I just don't really like horror movies, unless they're unintentionally really hilarious. Getting scared just isn't really a pleasant thing for me. However, if you're a big fan of this kind of stuff, you'll probably enjoy this. There was also a Star Trek panel, and I believe a screening of Star Trek Beyond, an Aliens panel for the 30 year anniversary of the film. There was some stuff for Sherlock, Prison Break, and 24 Legacy, more shows I should probably watch. Apparently, Luc Besson's new movie Valerian, with Dane DeHaan and Cara Delevingne, Levine looks absolutely incredible. And to wrap this up, in animated news, there was some stuff for South Park Season 20 and the show's 20 year anniversary. Season 20 starts on September 14th, in case you were wondering. There was some new stuff from the Trolls movie, which surprisingly actually doesn't look that bad to me. There's a new DreamWorks film coming out with Alec Baldwin called Boss Baby? Okay, sure. Okay, all of that was the non-Marvel, non-Warner Brothers stuff. I told you there was a lot. Let's start off with Warner Brothers. Before we get to the really big stuff, a few little things out of Warner Brothers. There was a trailer for the new animated show Justice League Action, which from what I can tell has the voice cast of the original Justice League show, one of my favorite shows and just pieces of entertainment of all time. However, this trailer didn't really get me excited, although I'm pretty sure this is aimed for a bit of a younger demographic. There was some stuff for Teen Titans Go, which I don't watch, but I'm told by my cousin is terrible. A new DC animated movie called DC Superhero Girls Hero of the Year premiered. Alright. This, however, was kind of outshined by the premiere of DC's other animated movie, Batman the Killing Joke. This got a mixed to positive reaction, which surprised me a bit. There's a whole controversy about a Batman-Batgirl sex scene at the start of the film, which, from what I know about the relationship between those two characters, does seem a bit weird. But who knows, maybe the rest of the film is great. I might review it once I get to see it. There was a panel for Supergirl Season 2, and there were panels and trailers for Arrow Season 2, Legends of Tomorrow Season 2, The Flash Season 3, and I believe Gotham Season 3. The one that obviously stands out to me is The Flash, since it's the only one of those that I really watch. Overall, it looks great. Can I just say though, I know I've only seen the first two episodes, and I know a lot of people love it, but Gotham, at least from that trailer, looks pretty bad to me. I might give it a chance down the line, especially since they're doing the Court of Vowels now, but seriously. Can you tell me who you are? My name is Fish Mooney. Bitch. Then there were some Suicide Squad character trailers for the Joker, Harley Quinn, and Amanda Waller, plus this final trailer slash remix. Then there were some Wonder Woman costumes on display, this poster was released, and then the trailer came out. And this movie actually looks really cool. That footage we saw a while back didn't really impress me. To me, it just looked kinda meh. But I actually really like this. The action looks cool, Gal Gadot looks like she's still good as Wonder Woman, Chris Pine looks like he's gonna be great in this, and the ending of the trailer where the logo comes on and the Wonder Woman theme is playing, I thought that was awesome. Awesome. A lot of people, I guess, don't like it, but I personally really like that kind of guitar theme. Overall, this trailer got me way more hype for this movie than I was before. Then there was a trailer for Kong Skull Island, which I personally think looks awesome. I wasn't aware that Sam Jackson and John Goodman were in this, so that was cool to see. Tom Hiddleston looks great in this, Corey Hawkins looks great in this, and they have made King Kong enormous here. Like in a couple shots, I was thinking, he looks bigger than he normally is, and then at the end, it's totally confirmed.
So yeah, now I believe this thing could fight Godzilla. There was a trailer for King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. When I was watching this, I was thinking, this is edited in a really weird way, and looks oddly stylistic for a King Arthur movie. And then the name Guy Ritchie popped up, and I was like, oh okay, now it makes sense. And this doesn't look that great to me. Doesn't look awful, doesn't look great. Unless people say it's really awesome, I'll probably just skip this one. Then there was another trailer for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So far, this movie is looking like a fun, enjoyable ride. For some reason, this doesn't really feel like Harry Potter to me, but it still looks fun. There was also a trailer for the Lego Batman movie, and I know this is gonna sound kind of ridiculous, but this might have been my favorite thing out of this Comic Con. Maybe. This movie looks so hilarious, and just so fantastic. It's making fun of Batman in the perfect way, it looks like an amazing kids film that adults will also enjoy, the animation style is great, the cast is phenomenal, this just looks genuinely awesome. And finally, for Warner Brothers, let's talk about the big one, the Justice League trailer. I was pretty surprised that DC released this trailer, since I'm guessing they only have like four scenes to work with, but to be fair, they turned those four scenes into a pretty great trailer. The main thing I got from this was that DC is trying to say, wait, please don't leave. After Batman v Superman's reception, although some people do love it, a lot of people didn't, DC has definitely tried to make this more light. There are way more jokes, there's more self-awareness, there's rock music. Visually, this still looks like a Zack Snyder DC movie, but tonally, it doesn't really feel like that. And I'm very okay with that. I like Ezra Miller as The Flash. He isn't really classic Barry Allen, but I like him in this role. Jason Momoa looks pretty bulky and scary and Khal Drogo-y as Aquaman. Ben Affleck's still great. Gal Gadot's still great. Ray Fisher, we didn't really see enough of him to judge, but I like the cyborg costume. I also really like the Flash costume. It's more jaggedy and metal than I'm used to, but I feel like it fits in this world. Ultimately, I'm surprisingly really pumped for this. After Batman v Superman, I was like, yeah, that was fine, but I wasn't really looking forward to more from this universe. But now, this movie at least looks really cool. Now, let's move over to Marvel. For their little news, that Captain America statue that's gonna be up in Brooklyn was unveiled. Looks pretty neat. There was some stuff for the Civil War 2 comic, a new Spider-Man comic called Dead No More, and a trailer for the upcoming X-Men Marvel TV show Legion, which looks super confusing, but also kind of interesting. A Guardians of the Galaxy ride was announced, called Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Sounds pretty awesome. And then the first big reveal was the Planet Hulk armor from Thor Ragnarok, which looks incredible. It was already pretty much confirmed, but it's nice to officially know that the Planet Hulk story will be a big part of this. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this, click here or the link down below. Then there were some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. screen tests and bloopers, and there was the teaser for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, which revealed that Ghost Rider is going to be in it, which really surprised me. I thought they were going to give Ghost Rider a movie or maybe a Netflix show, but no, he's on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Still, it's great to have this character in the MCU. I can't wait to see what they do with him. My only concern is if the special effects will look really good on a cable TV show, but so far this show has done pretty well with its visual effects. Then there were the teasers for the upcoming Marvel Netflix shows. The Luke Cage teaser looks fantastic, I can't wait until September 30th. Then there was the Iron Fist teaser, which looked interesting. I don't know a lot about Iron Fist, and this trailer doesn't show much, but it's Marvel, it's Netflix, it's probably gonna be great. And then there was this Defenders teaser. Firstly, I'm surprised that this is coming out already next year, but the sooner the better I guess. I think it's gonna be so cool to see all these heroes on the same show, kind of like a darker, more street-level Avengers. Also, just putting this out there, I'm assuming Iron Fist will come out April 2017, and Defenders will come out September 2017, so I'm wondering how Daredevil Season 3 and Jessica Jones Season 2 are gonna fit in after that. Like, now that the Defenders have been assembled, it's gonna be interesting to see how these characters have their own solo adventures afterwards. Also, I'm kind of wondering how the Punisher fits into all of this. Then, in Marvel movie news, there was the Doctor Strange trailer, and yeah, it looks cool. I have pretty much the exact same thoughts on this trailer as I did on the last one. Looks kind of weird, trippy, inception-y, and it looks like a new kind of thing in the MCU. The visuals look great, the villain looks cool, it does have some funny moments, especially at the end. The cast looks great, I'm looking forward to it. It's not blowing my mind yet, but it looks really good. Also, Cumberbatch's American accent is pretty solid. This doesn't make any sense. And now, I have to say, good on Marvel for this, but they are incredibly good with their Comic-Con security, because I haven't been able to find any videos online of the next couple of trailers, so we're just gonna have to go with the descriptions for now. For Thor Ragnarok, there wasn't really a trailer, since the movie's been shooting for about a week, but there was still some pretty cool stuff. From what I hear, most of it was kind of comedic stuff, showing what Thor was up to while Civil War was happening, and then some quick behind-the-scenes shots and concept art of Thor and Hulk. While I am super excited to see Planet Hulk, I'm also interested to see what the Thor storyline will 
would be in this. Also, the logo for the movie changed to this. Then, there was a Spider-Man Homecoming trailer, which apparently had this teen comedy vibe to it, which I actually think really fits this version of Spider-Man. Plus, they probably haven't shot a lot of action, or finished a lot of the special effects yet, so those comedy scenes are probably all they had to show. The villain was also confirmed to be the Vulture, and we also got this pretty great concept art. The final trailer was the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 trailer, which apparently looks absolutely amazing. One big reveal is Kurt Russell showing up, he's Peter Quill's father in this. People are saying that Baby Groot is the standout here, and all in all, again, can't wait for this. This also got a new logo. In other small tidbits, Brie Larson was officially confirmed as Captain Marvel, which we already pretty much knew, and this movie also got a new logo. And finally, the Marvel opening logo also got a redesign, which is going to take some getting used to, but just take a look for yourself. Pretty cool, although I personally preferred the old one. So those were my thoughts on the big reveals from this year's Comic Con. What did you think of these? And who do you think won this year? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram at BHL underscore Hudson, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.